the Cosmic Desktop Alpha from System76 is almost here, releasing towards the end of July. We're not sure on the exact date it's dropping, and it's entirely possible it does get delayed once again, but assuming it doesn't, within the next couple of weeks. So with the release of the July edition of the Cosmic Updates blog, it is time once again to do a recap of the past couple of months for the final time before the release of the Alpha. Now the last update I did was back in March, so let's take off from the April post. April tools hammering out new cosmic features. Now I'm unsure why it's included, but the blog starts off with some updates to PopOS 22.04. I would understand if it's something about 24.04, the version that is going to be shipping the Cosmic Alpha. But this seems like it should just be in a whole separate blog post. So we are going to move past that. In prior videos, I've talked about the Cosmic theming. So unlike GTK, where it doesn't really have a theming API, what it has is full CSS. This allows you to do literally anything you want to an application which means that dealing with that as a developer is very difficult because people can go out of their way and there are themes that do this to basically break an application and users may not be aware if it's a theme that they went and installed from the internet. Instead with Cosmic, they basically have a extensive recolor API where you can recolor different elements of the application and for 99% of people, this is all you are looking for. Now, initially, this was only going to apply to the Cosmic application, so those iced applications making use of libcosmic. After this update, it also applies to those using GTK3 and GTK4, along with those packaged as a flat pack. But if you don't want it to apply and you want to have a different theme for your different toolkits, you can go and disable this global theming. At this stage, it does not include the QT applications. There's no reason that can't be done, it's just nobody had written that automatic theming yet, and considering they were coming from a GTK background with being a GNOME desktop on Pop OS previously, it makes sense to do the GTK stuff first, and then expand out from there. Previously, they also didn't support custom icon themes, now they do. Also, this change is going to apply across your GTK and your Cosmic applications. Again, QT not being included here, but I imagine some point in the future. Now, I don't know what kind of person uses this feature, but the feature is there. There has been labeling done on the light and the dark mode, so you can swap between them depending on the time of day. If you're one of these people that do this, please let me know why in the comments. Now, personally on Linux, I'm not really an App Store enjoyer, but every desktop needs to have one, and Cosmic is the same. They had one previously, in this update, they're working on a new one. And look, as long as it distinguishes between regular packages, flat packs, snaps, and anything else it wants to support, it's good enough. If you ask me, pretty much all the app stores look exactly the same. Yeah, technically they look different, icons are different sizes, but it's an app store, it does app store things. Something I do really care about though, is window management. So, like most other desktops, if you hold down the super key and drag from anywhere in the window, you will be able to move the window. I like this in KDE, I like this in i3, I like this in Hyperland, Awesome, and everything else that has it, and if it was missing in Cosmic, I could learn to deal with it, but I really don't like having to move my cursor up to the bar to manage a window. I'm used to using things like i3 and not having bars, so I like things working the way I like them. Previously, there wasn't keyboard settings, which is, um, kind of important. You can get away with it during development because most people developing it are probably using a QWERTY keyboard, and if you're working a System76, you're probably typing in English, but if you're shipping something out to people who are going to be using it around the world, there's going to be different configurations that people are using, different regional layouts and things like that. So having this in the final product, very, very important. There are some minor changes here and there, like some notifications for power state, on-screen displays for things like brightness, volume, and airplane mode, some further work on the cosmic applications for things like editing and 
file management and things like that. But I want to talk about some of the third party contributions, specifically a couple from Ryan Brew, who added things that aren't like critical to the desktop, but you'll notice very quickly when they're missing. For example, worked on touchpad gestures for switching workspaces. I'm not really a heavy laptop user anymore, but if you use one, a lot of people like doing things like three finger swiping to go between the desktops. It's something that macOS started doing a long, long time ago, and it just feels nice if you're using a touchpad. Thumbnail previews on your application docs. So if you have multiple instances of Firefox open, you can see what each of those windows are currently showing. And of course, quick window snapping when you go to the edge of your screen. I mainly care about the tiling component of Cosmic, but the reason why Cosmic is really cool is it's going to have really strong floating and really strong tiling. So you need to have these features here for the floating users as well, and I will use floating in certain specific cases, and this is going to be nice in those cases. Now, in this month, we also saw some changes being made for the NVIDIA 555 driver, the driver that basically fixes the core issues that exist with NVIDIA on Wayland, assuming you have a new enough card where it's going to matter. And I'm not sure why this one didn't get its own specific section, but drag and drop support was implemented in Iced, LibCosmic, and Cosmic Files, the Cosmic File Manager. Drag and drop is pretty important if you ask me. Is it something that is critical early on to get implemented? No, it just needs to be on that list to make sure it's done before your regular average user is actually using it. Now, I've said before that Cosmic doesn't exist in a vacuum. Cosmic is building off the good that other desktops have done and learning from the other desktops' mistakes. There's no point implementing the way that virtual desktops work on KDE, for example, where all your virtual desktops are connected together, so you don't have separate virtual desktops for each different monitor. This is a holdover legacy feature that does not need to be here anymore. They should be separate desktops, and you can learn from these mistakes and just not implement them again. Rather than rebuilding something from the 90s, implement a 2024 desktop. And as always, that was not every single change made in that month. So if you want to go see the rest of them, check out the blog post linked down below. Let's move on to May, a blog to satisfy your monthly cosmic fixes. Speaking of things that definitely should be there, but weren't completed yet, display mirroring is nearly finished, including cases where resolutions, orientations, and refresh rates are different than on the display being mirrored. I don't use display mirroring that often, but it can be incredibly useful if you're doing things like a presentation, for example, or just any other reason why you need to show people something, like doing hardware screen capture, for example. I'd probably use this once or twice a year, but I would be very annoyed if I couldn't use it once or twice a year. Again, another update for PopOS, this time for 24.04 though, if you are an ARM enjoyer, they are going to be building ARM packages, so cosmic on ARM if, uh, if that sounds exciting for you. Moving on to the App Store, minus a couple of UI issues, it was completed. And I'll say the same thing that I said before. It's an App Store? Like, is it any better than what KDE does or GNOME does or anything else does? It's an app store, like, I, I, they all look exactly the same to me. The only difference I see between the app stores is sometimes they use a different toolkit, and in this case, I think the toolkit looks nice. The only thing I don't really like about the default cosmic theming is I don't really like the light blue cyan -y color they use. I would opt for something else, but besides that, it looks fine. And here is the opinion from the least biased user possible. The System76 CEO, Carl Rochelle. I've used the terminal to update systems for years, but the Cosmic App Store is so fast and lays out the information so well that I found it more efficient to update via the app than command line. Now, I'm sure he's being honest here, but <laughs> it does come off as kind of funny coming from the CEO. 
in the file manager cosmic files integration for gvfs the gnome virtual file system was added for handling external storage such as flash drives or network shares now this is good if you're a normal person who does things through their desktop for me though even on plasma i'm using a lot of the existing standalone tooling i had because that's what i've always done but for a normal person that doesn't have all that baggage, um, this is nice to have to just make all of that stuff seamlessly work. The login screen, the greeter, has been integrated with login D, adding the ability to lock the session on an idle timer, as well as unlock a suspended session. Very important for your login screen to be able to do. For those app developers that need a context menu, a generic context menu widget was added into LibCosmic. LibCosmic basically being the additional libraries needed to make Cosmic specific applications instead of just a generic iced application. There's going to be additional things like integrating with their theming system and things of that nature. Now in the list of fixes, there was an amusing network applet bug. The network applet can now connect to wireless networks that don't require a password. This is obviously something that should be possible, but it's one of those things where it's really unlikely that you're going to test it because unless you're doing development for Cosmic on a public Wi-Fi, like you go to a McDonald's or a cafe or something, you're probably not connecting to a network that doesn't have a password because your home network definitely should have a password. So it's one of those things where it's really easy to miss. And for the love of God, if you don't have a password set on your home network, stop watching this video immediately and go and set one. One thing I always appreciate when it's included in these blog posts is a section on the cosmic community changes, because sometimes the changes in here aren't necessarily changes to Cosmic itself, it's things happening around Cosmic. For example, Eduardo here created a GitHub template for creating a Cosmic application. Documentation around doing ICE development and then especially Cosmic development on top of that is a little bit lacking right now, so it can be unclear where you need to start from. This user, 11soft, made a Cosmic Web App Manager. So if you like having websites installed as an application, and you want it in a format that works nicely on the Cosmic Desktop, this is an option for you. Remember earlier how we talked about keyboard settings in the settings interface? Well, now there is also an applet for it so you can have it in your dock as well. As we are getting closer and closer to the alpha release, a lot of the updates are a lot smaller now and they're things that aren't crazy exciting, but they're things that basically need to be there in the desktop to make it actually make sense. Now, I would say moving on to June, but June was the branding update blog post. So instead, let's go to July and talk about Cosmic Updates featuring a community. They got really lazy with the name this time. Inactive window styling. So they already had styling on active window. So on the active window, they have this nice border around the outside, which is not something that by default is done on Plasma, which really, really annoys me. Anyway. Now on the inactive windows, it is also going to change the color being used along the header bar. So on the active window, it has this nice blue here. On the inactive window, it is changed to gray. I don't really think it's necessary to have both. Is it nice to have there as a configuration option? Yeah, sure. A lot of people have asked me, why haven't I done a cosmic video yet? This is the reason why. Custom keyboard shortcuts have now been added into the input settings. I heavily, heavily use custom keyboard shortcuts, whether it's overriding some of the default window action stuff or basic things like I want to open up this when I press Super D or I want to open up this when I press Super E. I have my hotkeys here set up the way that I like them. I don't want to change them. I'm not going to change them. Stop asking me to change them. I'm not going to use Krona. Without that there, I would hate the desktop. I knew it was going to be there eventually. 
And now it's there. Now I really prefer the way that Cosmic is doing the changes compared to Plasma. So over in Plasma, if we go to the shortcuts, the shortcut configuration also kind of acts as like a reference for the shortcuts. So it doesn't matter if we've set a default key or not, all of the keys are going to be listed here. In the case of Cosmic, the custom shortcuts is only going to list the custom shortcuts, making it very clear exactly what you've changed. Another thing I knew would be there but wasn't there yet is a super tab or alt tab feature for switching windows. In this one though, you also have the option of selecting the window with control and then a number. This is not something I would probably ever see myself using that often, but if you are a floating window enjoyer, this is probably something you're used to having. Now, I don't have that many icons in my bar down here, but imagine you do. What should be done with those? Well, in the case of Cosmic, they have now implemented a panel overflow menu. So if there are too many icons and your panel is too full, just put them in a separate window. They can be accessed with these three dots. I do think this should be configurable. So you can say, I want this many icons shown and then put the rest in the overflow or I don't want to even have an overflow menu, just dump everything into the bar. Cosmic decided to make use of these newfangled multi-core, multi-thread CPUs we've had for about 20 years now and the Cosmic Compositor will use multiple threads for rendering. Very good. And of course there were some bug fixes along the way as well and some fun little community changes. For example, customizable keyboard repeat. I am not a big fan of keyboard repeat, so I would probably turn this down to um, as long as possible, or turn it as high to as long as possible. But if you do like it, the option to configure it is there. Or if you don't like it, the option to configure is there as well. In the App Store, if they publish release notes, you can now see the release notes. The problem is, a lot of things don't publish release notes, so um, it's probably going to be empty a lot of the time. Here is a random Cosmic Color Picker application. I like my color picker to be very, very minimal, where basically I just click a part of the screen and it dumps a hex code into my paste buffer. But if you want something more extensive, here you have the option as well. Do you like being annoying? Here is an applet to play background noise. <laughs> I don't know why you'd want that. And uh, here is a Pokedex. If you don't want to go to Bulbapedia, there you go. I am very excited for Cosmic. Now that the last little things are being ironed out, it's getting very close to release. There's still issues that need to be dealt with that are stopping that happening. Otherwise, it would be out today. But soon, Cosmic is going to be here. I've talked plenty about it in the past before, but just know I'm absolutely going to be trying it. So let me know your thoughts down below. Do you care about Cosmic? Are you excited for Cosmic? Have you played around a bit with the pre-alpha and like or dislike where it's going? I would love to know. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe to the Libero Pay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and... Cosmic will take over the world.